morning and Borada. Welcome to Bethel Baptist Church. Whether you're at home, online, or whether you're in the building, or whether you're in the woods like me and Josh, um, you're very, very welcome. So I'm in the Nativity Trail that we have at the back of Bethel. And if you haven't been yet, you're very welcome to come tonight. Any time from half past five, you don't need to book. Um, so there's a trail, a nativity story, all lit up, and then there's hot chocolates and a free gift at the end if you'd like it. Um, also this afternoon there's community carol singing in the community centre in Ponteclean, just in the car park from quarter to four if you'd like to join us. So this morning we've got Andy, he'll be speaking to us on Adventurers Assemble, so really looking forward to that. But before we go further, it's the second Sunday in Advent, and that is on love. So. Let's read together 1 John 4, 7 to 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I'm a visual person, so when I picture God's love being made complete, I think of a circle. But recently I realised that the symbol that we naturally identify with love is a heart. And that, if you think about it, is actually sorry, a circle guys, um, that's sorry, been temporarily guys. pushed down from above. What a beautiful image of the verse we read, verse 10. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus came down temporarily to earth, which we celebrate at Christmas, gave himself for us on the cross at the appointed time, and then went back up to be with his father. But the other amazing thing is, that we're included in the wonder that is love and that when we love one another God lives in us his love is made complete in us and like the image of a heart that hopefully is on the screen with lights we then shine God's love into a desperate world let's pray as we light this second candle that represents love this Advent Sunday let's be thankful to Jesus the light of the world who came down to earth to be among his beloved and to save us from our sins. Thank you that you are now seated with the Father and that you welcome us to join with you in your mission of love by the power of the Holy Spirit to love and shine your light of hope and love to a hurting world. In your precious name, Amen. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, apologies that we missed the first bit of that um, live. So you got to see Beck doing a bit of, uh, yeah, we didn't quite catch what she was saying. Um, yes, um, thanks, Tom, for lighting the second candle. Um, so yeah, we're just going to start this morning's service. Um, it is officially December, so don't be surprised if there's at least one Christmas song in here. Apologies for anyone who thinks that's too early, but yeah, I've got the mic. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you like to stand, this is Born as the King.
for the kids now before they go out to their activities and live wires. Um, Jesus, we pray that you would um, go with these precious kids that we have in this church, Lord. You would go um, and just be with them as they spend this time learning about you now. Lord God, I pray that you would um, equip the leaders just to be passionate and inspirational and memorable, Lord God. When I think back to um, yeah, some of the things I learned in Sunday school, Lord, I remember still, Father, and um, yeah, I really pray that that would be the case for these kids. Um, Jesus, we thank you for each and every one of them, Lord, for the lives um, and the potential that they have, Lord God, for the joy that they bring, and um, yeah, we're just so blessed to have them. I pray that you'd have your hand over them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Kids? you can go. It's lovely to see you. <laughs> Have fun. Um, yeah, we're going to just continue worshipping now. Um, this is a song, I think, um, called, it's called Noel. Um, it's a different version to the classic one. Um, I think we did it a couple of years ago, maybe on a Christmas Eve service, so a few of you might know this, but um, yeah, the words are absolutely beautiful, so um, even if you're not sure of it, just, just focus in on those.
Till the shell was moved for good For the Lamb He conquered the dead And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born We just want to give you your dues this morning. It's so easy at Christmas to think of Jesus as the little baby in the manger who's helpless and powerless and, oh, that is not who you are. Um, you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords and you reign over everything and everyone, Lord. And, um, yeah, Jesus, forgive us when we don't give you your rightful place, Lord, in, in our midst, Lord, in our lives, um, when we forget who you are, Lord, when we create you and put you in a box. And, um, yeah, Jesus, I just pray that you would just blow our minds this morning, Lord God, that you would just once again um, just remind us that why we have given our lives to serve you, Lord, because you are so amazing and so wonderful and so awesome and so kind. And um, Lord, with all the power and all the majesty that you have, you look on us still and you love us and you are so patient and so kind. And um, yeah, Jesus, we just pledge our lives again to you this morning. Lord, in the busyness of this Christmas season, Father, I pray that you would help each of us now to get our priorities right, Lord, to spend our time and our energy, Lord, where it matters, Lord, and not where it doesn't. And Father, for Andy now as he comes to share, I pray that your spirit would be on him. I pray that he would be anointed with your word to share with your people at this time, Lord. Um, yeah, you would just um, really just stay any nerves that he has, Lord, and um, 
just really empower him uh, to speak to our hearts now. Lord, give us ears to listen, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Can we take a moment to honor this fantastic worship band? Thank you guys, that was amazing this morning. Sarah's ruined me sermon by uh, praying about the busyness of time, which is something we're gonna get onto later on. You're probably thinking, they've invited him back to have another go. I know, I'm as surprised as you are. But then I got thinking about it, and I remember a story of a young preacher who had been invited to speak in, in quite a big church with an awesome band and fantastic people like you all. And the worship before was like the worship we've experienced this morning. It just brought heaven down to earth. And this young man got up and he preached his message and at the end of it, they went back into the worship again and, and they just felt the presence of God in the room. And one of the leaders of the church came up to the young man and said, would you like to preach again? And he thought, well, that's unusual. I've, I've never, never experienced that before, but yeah, I suppose so. So he got up and he preached another message. And the service finished and, and he couldn't get this idea out of his head and he, he couldn't work out what was going on. So he went, he went to the pastor afterwards and said, uh, I've never been in a church where I've been asked to preach twice before like that. And the pastor said, ah, well, you see, young man, we're a church where we're a worshiping community and we understand the presence of God. We know when the anointing is there. And when it's not, we normally give the preacher another go to see if they're any better the second time. <laughs> so, for those of you who were not able to attend the wedding on Monday, what an amazing time. Um, two things I experienced on Monday that I've never experienced in a wedding before. First one, I've never been to a wedding in my pajamas. And second, because he's out the back, he won't hear me, so I'll get away with this. Kyle stood up in a meeting, invited the congregation to stand, and didn't introduce himself as the youth pastor. <laughs> I was stunned. I really was. One of the things that Pastor John said in, in his message was that 93% of all communication is nonverbal. I could just smile at you for the next 20 minutes then and we don't really need to do anything, do we? But I thought, I'd better, I better say something, hadn't I? So, if you're a title type and, and you're into that kind of thing, my title for this morning is Adventurers Assemble. Advent. The Greek word that's used when we're talking about Advent is parousia, and it means the arrival of a person or a thing. Advent and, and adventure actually come from the same Latin word, adveniah, and it means, I, I love this, it means something is about to happen. Church, something is about to happen. Last week, we had Jackie's fantastic message on hope and expectancy, and, and from that expectancy, I wanted to take a, another step now into preparation. And for a few moments, I want to think about the life of John the Baptist. I mean, we wouldn't have a church to call ourselves if it hadn't been for him, would it? But we're going to read from Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at verses 11 to 17. I love this. The angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. 
Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He'll be a great joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He's never to take any wine or other fermented drink, and he'll be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he's born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. If you heard John's message a couple of weeks ago, um, turn to the person next to you and say, he's looking for the next point in his sermon. <laughs> Advent, a time of preparation. Come on then, own up. Who's got all the decorations sorted? Not many. Sort of. Our outside lights are up, so everybody thinks we've decorated. But uh, the Lewis family, they're well ahead of the game. Lucy, Joe, and James, two weeks ago, thought they were putting a five-foot tree up in the garden. They've actually got something that um, warns low-flying aircraft that they're over upon to clean. Because, surprise, surprise, five foot and five meters are not the same thing. <laughs> in Romans 8, and verse 22, it says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Right up to now because we're in that time of preparation. If I, by the way, yeah, this is a complete aside, right? If I look awkward this morning, I like to wander around when I'm preaching, but Josh has warned me, stand still. So every now and again, you'll see me grabbing hold of this to stop myself wandering because otherwise the camera goes all over the place. So... Preparation. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Jill and I went to Hereford. Um, we went out for lunch, and we, we knew where we were going, but we put it in the sat-nav so that we knew how to get there. And we, we prepared, and we followed the directions, even when it took us away that we weren't expecting to go. We still followed it, and we got there no problem at all. Now... <clears throat> For those of you who are of a strictly persuasion, Jill and Emma and Jill's mom were going to have a, a strictly night in Emma's house. So when we were coming back, what we thought was, we'll go down the heads of the valley road because that way we can come into the top of the valley and I can drop Jill off, everything will be fine. I didn't follow the path I'd been given. And what I didn't realize was the heads of the valley's road was closed. But that's okay, because there was a little sign that said diversion. So we followed the diversion, and then there weren't any more signs that said diversion. And suddenly, we found ourselves going in a big loop around the mountain, back to where we started again. And I thought, I have no idea where we are now but I saw a sign for Brecon, right? I'm at Abergavenny, trying to get to the Rhonda, and now we're heading to Brecon. I won't mention the fact that at one point, I said, we'll get to Brecon and do it that way. Jill said, no, go down this road. We ended up in Brecon. <laughs> Follow the path that God has marked out for you. Your way is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You can't see miles down the road. You can see the next step that you need to take. When you're preparing for something, you won't know everything in the outcome. You might not have everything perfectly laid out, but you know that if you follow the path that Jesus has set for you, you will get to where he wants you to be. John spent his whole life preparing for the coming of Jesus. 
In Isaiah 40 and verse 3, it says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. You know, some Bible scholars believe that John had known from a very early time that this life-changing event was about to happen and he was going to be part of it. Well, if you think about it, they were, Jesus and John were cousins. They probably grew up together. You know, playing armies and things like that. Can you imagine that when John suddenly got the revelation? <gasps> when we were playing Israelites versus Romans and you went, Poof. you weren't joking, were you? You can really do that. You're the son of God. He was reared within view of Mount Nebo where Moses had stood and looked over the promised land and spoke of the promised Messiah. He lived in an area near the River Jordan that Joshua had crossed and taken the land and destroyed Jericho. He lived in the same region where Amos had pastured his flocks and dreamed of a coming Davidic king who would rule all the nations. He probably visited the brook where Elijah had been fed by the ravens. Everything was building to this point, and he waited for his call from God. Maybe his dad had told him about the visit of the angel, said that he was to be like Elijah of prophecy. Maybe John intentionally started copying those traits. He he dressed like Elijah. He lived on locusts and wild honey. Blech. Apparently, locusts, they, they, they can either be roasted or they can be sun-dried. And then, then you eat them like that. If anybody wants to try it, feel free to let me know what they taste like because I don't think I fancy the idea. I am not a one for... I'm out of here, find me a celebrity, but not into that kind of thing. When John was 30 years old, his call came. The nation was groaning under the cruelties of Roman bondage. They were electrified by his message. This strange, rugged, fearless hermit from the desert, crying out on the banks of the Jordan, that the long foretold deliverer was at hand. The coming king is on his way. The burden of his cry was repent. Church, that's still on God's heart today. His preaching experienced incredible success. The whole land was stirred by what he had to say. Great multitudes came to him to be baptized. John had incredible influence over the people. They seemed to do anything. They were ready for whatever he suggested. Yes, we'll go and do it. He was at the height of his popularity when he baptized Jesus and proclaimed him as the Messiah. Wow. Then... His mission accomplished. He exited stage, stage left. His work was done. He presented Messiah to the world. As you know, we've recently completed a series on Here to Serve. What a great example. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor John preached on where to serve. This is exactly what John did. He was in his moment... He was there to do exactly what God called him to do and then he was ready to step aside when the time was right. He fulfilled his mission, released the anointing of the Son of God onto the world and stepped out. Advent heralds the arrival of God with us. It's what we're preparing for this morning. 
It's the time when God comes to earth to live as we live. It's the time when God shares his love with us so we should be able to share that love with others. Advent prepares us to welcome the arrival of God, the teacher, if you like, who comes and teaches us by example. As you all know, my beautiful wife is a teacher, and she will tell you the best way for a child to learn is by example. Okay. How many of you are old enough to remember when we used to do times tables? You know, and you just, ones, two is two. I, th- I knew you would be, Steve. Well done. One, two is two. Two, two is a four. Don't worry, we're not going to go through it all. I wouldn't make you go through it. Certainly not the two times, because it's a bit hard, that one. But uh, the teacher teaching us by example how we should share his love. Not only our love for God, but our love for others. How we love one another. I was reading something this morning. You know, the greatest Bible that many people will read is you and I. It's how we relate to each other. It's how we love one another and how we love our wider community. What do the disappearing banners say? Love God, love others. How do we love others? This morning, Sunday, we lit the second of the Advent candles, the candle that represents preparation. And it needs to symbolize our preparation for God's coming again. Zephaniah said, the great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. Advent is a great time. It gives us four weeks to ponder where we are in God's creation of things. Advent can be a time when we as individuals, as members of the whole family of God, can turn a mirror on ourselves. And we should look at the reflection and ponder our place in this wonderful family. I need another point. Look at the person next to you. Wow. What an amazing family we've got. Let's love one another. Let's care. Let's show compassion. Let's build a spirit of unity that is going to cause our community to say, what's different about these people? Do you know, it's really easy to be divisive, isn't it? It's really easy to be critical. It's not so easy to say, God, let's just come together. Let's make a difference. Isaiah expresses Advent's hope by saying, would that God would come and find us mindful of him. Would that God would come and find us mindful of him. Do we we meditate on God on a daily basis? Is God more than 25 minutes, 30 minutes on a Sunday morning? Does he consume us? The Bible says I'm consumed by a passion for the Lord. Because you see, when you're consumed by that passion, it starts to overflow. When you're full, it's got to go somewhere. It's got to be released into our community where we can make a difference. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that the demands of daily life just tend to get in the way Do you find that sometimes, you know, you you have a plan for the day. You know what you're going to do. Right. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to spend an hour in prayer. So that lasts about five minutes. And then I'm going to study God's word. And then the phone rings. Have you been missed soul PPE? No, I haven't. But life starts to get in the way of all of the great plans that we have. In the Gospels, Jesus suggests that because of the demands our life puts on each one of us, it's very easy for us to forget what we should be about. That we are because of God. That we have 
because of God. We're the benefactors of an amazing God. Without our belief in God, can you imagine what this world would be like? It would be a very different place. How often do you sit and think, well, really, would it make any difference if I was here or not? Yes, it would. You might not recognize your part right at this very moment, but that doesn't mean that you haven't got a part to play. This world would be a very different place without you. Anybody seen the film? It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, who doesn't love a good Christmas film? If you don't watch It's a Wonderful Life, you'll have to watch Die Hard. It's up to you. But you know, going through, this is what life would have been like if you hadn't been here. And no matter what you think this morning, no matter how insignificant you think you are, this world would be different without you. God is the best thing that ever happened to this planet. And he's the best thing that ever happened to you and I. American preacher called Catherine Coleman once said, the Holy Spirit is the only restraining good left in the world today. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be here when he's not. Advent, four weeks when we can reflect on how we might heed John's call to the people. We've recently spent the last month considering how to serve, where to serve, when to serve. Maybe this Advent time, God is prompting you. It's your time to serve. It's your time to stand up and say, look, I'm not much. But if you can do something with not much, here I am. Because you can make a difference. Advent. Four weeks when we can balance our busy lives with times of stillness and reflection. A time when we can just take a breath, step back and say, God, what do you need me to do? You see, Taking that time of reflection is a time when the things that matter can come to the fore. I don't know about you, but I get worked up by the silliest little things. Only me then. <laughs> don't come in a car with me, all right? Matthew will be absolutely busting to tell you all the stories of when I'm not quite as gracious as I should be because God has allowed one of those idiots on the road again right in front of me when they shouldn't be there. I'm not the only one nodding my head now, am I? Stillness, it allows the things that really matter to come to the fore. What has Jesus done for you? What difference has he made in your life? Where can you take that and apply it to love someone else? Reflection gives us room to ask ourselves questions and to ask God's, God questions. You know, God don't mind having questions. Have you ever asked God this? What do I believe? Why do I believe it? What difference is it making in how I live? What can I give to God? What of mine belongs to God? What can I do that's going to make a difference in the community? And can I just say for a minute, don't be frightened about asking these tough questions of God because you're not going to take them by surprise. Advent should cause us to do two things, to watch and to wait. Staying awake and being alert are two Advent behaviors Jesus calls us to. Jesus is not coming to Bethlehem this Christmas, 
Bethlehem is history. Bethlehem has moved. Bethlehem is now located wherever you and I are. Wherever we love, we trust, we laugh, we cry, we make a stand. Wherever we stand up for the truth, wherever we choose to forgive, or wherever we just wait for God to speak to us. We are the new Bethlehem this Christmas. That's God's gift to us. Or, you might think, that's God's challenge to us. What we do with it is our thankfulness to God. God's given us the means to do His will. What we do then is our way of saying, God, here's my offering. Here I am, wholly available. Use me. Anybody ever do this thing? An idea drops into your head. That, oh, oh, this would work, this would be good. And then within two minutes, you've talked yourself out of it. Oh, I, I can't do that, I do, I'm only me. Stop thinking things about yourself that God doesn't think about you. Shut up and sit down. Now for some people, that'll be all they remember from this morning's service. How rude! You told me to shut up! If it helps, okay? Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. It's one of those things. We will hear what we want to hear. We'll take on board what we want to take on board. If you want to take offense on board, you'll find something to be offended by. If you want to take love on board, look for Jesus. Be still and know that I am God. If I say, shut up and sit down again, that'll be the texts that John gets. He told me to shut up. He told me to shut up and sit down. He's a strong man. He can bear it. Do you know, we need to intentionally take time to wait on God. The run-up to Christmas Day, oh, it can be manic, can't it? How are we doing on the presents front? Oh, that good. <laughs> What about the food shopping? My goodness. Have you ever been to Asda on Christmas Eve? It's like a war zone. People are in there, they're grabbing this, that, and the other. Never mind toilet rolls. It doesn't matter what they want. Everything's going in the basket. And let's face it, the shop's only shut for one day. People seem to buy like food is never going to be available again. We need times of stillness and reflection to hear him. We need times of stillness and reflection to pull all of this together. To appraise where we actually are in this God thing. Because it can become confusing at times, can't it? If we're honest. You know, we, we think that we've got it all laid out. We know exactly what's going to happen. And then God comes in and says, well, just do that. How do I do that? Don't worry, because remember, while we are waiting, God is working. He doesn't stop. He's always going in the background. He's always preparing the next thing for us. God gives us the opportunity to do something for him with our lives. Do you know there's always space for us to go our own way? But I've tended to find over the years it's probably not the best thing to do. It's probably better to follow God's leading. We're only here as short-term tenants. We can decide if we want to 
not to respond to God's call, but that has consequences. If we choose not to respond, if we choose to ignore his call, where's the goodness going to come from in our community? Because you only have to look at the television news to see it's not coming from out there. Church with the hands and feet and the mouth of Jesus this Christmas. What can you do to make a difference? How can you love on somebody who appears to be unlovable? How can you, you know, when you're going down to do your Christmas shopping and the traffic is really heavy and everybody's all trying to get into one space, how do you be that person who just backs off in your car and lets somebody in? How do you show love to a hurting generation? Where are you this morning? Are you ready? Advent, a time to prepare, a time to assess what we can do to, our, to position ourselves to be the hands and the mouth of Jesus in our community, to our neighbors, to our brothers and sisters in the church. How can we, this Christmas time, do something different? What are you preparing to do now that's going to echo through eternity? Do you know there's a story of a lady in Stuttgart who she hated the idea of evangelism. She just got really nervous by it all. She didn't like the idea of sharing her faith with people. She got scared of it. And she was a wonderful prayer. And she would go and, and she would get involved in events in the church and she would make the t- she would do anything but go out on the streets and talk to people. And in all of her life, she shared God's love with one person. It was one young man who she shared how Jesus changed her life. How insignificant is that? That one person was Reinhard Bonnke. You do not know who you're going to come into contact with. It's time for an adventure. Peter Pan. Life is an awfully big adventure. Why don't we go on it this Christmas time? Why don't we be part of the adventure? My challenge to you as we come to a close, adventurers assemble. Send John a text. Everybody send John a text. That'll go down really well. I don't know which camera's on. I'm sorry, but if you're lying in bed watching this this morning, at least you can answer your texts. But what if we all sent him a text saying, I want to be an adventurer. I'm ready to be part of the assembly. I said he wouldn't invite me back the last time. If you all text him, he'll definitely not invite me back again. What are you preparing to do? Adventurers, as the band come back. You see, if I was any good at this, I would have said that a couple of minutes ago instead of making them come running now. What are you going to do that makes a difference for your neighbours this Christmas? What are you going to do that makes a difference for that church member who needs to know because they're having a bit of a tough time, that Jesus loves them. Where are you this morning? Are you ready to be an adventurer? Is this all new to you? Maybe you're watching online and you're you're thinking, what's he on about? Jesus changes lives. Going to church doesn't. Well, it does, but not necessarily the way we expect. 
having an encounter with Jesus will change your life. And as we come to a time of worship now, we're going to break bread together in a moment. Um, if it, anybody hasn't got a communion cup, can you just slip your hand up if anybody needs anything? Because our wonderful welcome team will come around and, and make sure that you've got one. I say our wonderful welcome team, I mean Steve. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. What about you this morning? Do you know that you know that you know that Jesus is making a difference in your life? Because if you don't, he's one prayer away from you. And he's waiting. He's looking for adventurers. He's looking for people who will say, do you know what? I've been doing this for 40 years, but I'm about to change. This Christmas is going to be my commitment time. Just before the band lead us in some worship, should we pray? Jesus, we thank you for Christmas. Without you, this would be pointless. I pray this morning, Jesus, that you would fill our hearts, fill our hearts afresh with your love, reveal your will to each one of us. Lord God, I pray for adventurers to assemble this morning. I pray, Lord God, that we will commit to the vision of Bethel, but more importantly, we'll commit to the vision of you, Holy Spirit. We pray now that you would part the heavens, that you would come down, that you would rest on our lives, O oh God, that you would reveal your will to each and every one of us, the individual and the corporate, and that we would tie together, O oh God, and build your kingdom for your glory, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, we're going to sing a song before we come to, the, um, to do communion this morning. So again, if you want to use this time um, just to prep yourself for that or um, to reflect on what you've heard this morning, um, yeah, just to concentrate on what God might be saying to you um, individually, then yeah, feel free to do that as well. This is um, I'll Come to the Altar.
to get that bit of um, cellophane pulled back so that we can get at these things. In Mark chapter 14 and verse 22, it says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take it, this is my body. When I was thinking about this this morning, you know, I thought, this is Jesus doing something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. His broken body redeems us, redeems each one of us. As we take this together now, let's remember that. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you willingly chose the cross that we might be forgiven. Amen. We'll take this emblem together as a sign of unity under one Lordship of Jesus. When he took the cup and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and they drank it all. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they'd sung a hymn, 
they went out to the Mount of Olives. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your word promises us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. But you shed your blood once for all. We come before you now as your body, united under your lordship. We take this emblem now in remembrance of your sacrifice. Amen. We're going to wrap up this morning with uh, some more worship from the band. Do you know, if, if you're in need of prayer this morning, then it would be a privilege to pray with you. As we're worshiping now, if you've decided this morning, I want to be an adventurer, I want to be part of this, come and find yourself a seat somewhere and somebody will come and pray with you. Do you know, it's, let me just say, it's not about what happens here. It's about what happens here. Coming and sitting at the front, all that does is says, Jesus, I'm making a decision. I want to be an adventurer. I want to follow you. I want to do something more. We're going to worship now, and then Sarah will close for us. God bless you all. Have a fantastic week. Have a fantastic Advent. Have a fantastic Christmas. May your Asdas be quiet when you go in there. God bless you. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, we're going to spend some time worshipping before we close. Um, if you're able to stand and you want to, um, feel free. Otherwise, you can stay.
shall return in her homes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. i 
You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep all singing. Ten thousand reasons till my heart. Lord God, we thank you for your, um, we thank you for who you are, we thank you for the way that you love us, and we thank you for the fact that you choose us, um, in spite of everything, Lord God, Jesus, I pray that you would fill us up and send us out this week, Lord, that we would make a difference in this world, that we would be your hands and your feet and your voice. Lord, that everywhere that we touch, Lord, every situation we encounter, we would be bringing a bit of heaven here to earth right now, Lord, not waiting for you to come back, Lord Jesus, but doing it right now, Lord, bringing light and bringing love and bringing hope to the situations and the people that we meet. We ask that in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being here this morning and for, for tuning in online, guys. And um, yeah, see you same time next week. <laughs>